I was trying to help my son with some of his physics problems and uh, of course cross products came into it and uh, I remember cross products from about 50 years ago but darn if I could remember anything about them other than the word cross. <laughs> okay so then what I did was I did some checking on the internet and I found out there seemed to be two different ways to compute it and nobody was saying uh, how you get from one to the other. And so I started kind of working on it and thinking about it, and here's what I came up with. Okay, let's see. If I have a coordinate system here, and I have a vector B and a vector A, I'll make them different lengths, then uh, uh, an angle theta, then what they say is that the cross product, which is really orthogonal to the two vectors, is vector A cross vector B is equal to the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B times the sine of the angle between them. And so uh, another video then said, oh no, hey, it's, well I didn't say no, but it's A vector um, uh, now back that up and let me just say that uh, vector A is, it's got coordinates, A1, A2, and A3. And vector B has coordinates B1, B2, and B3. And one way, certainly, for saying this is because uh, I drew the vectors on a plane, which makes it real simple because we're looking straight at it and the vector came, the product comes either straight out or straight down. Um, using these coordinates, it's three dimensional, uh, which is what all vectors are. They're three dimensional, really. And um, the result is still orthogonal to the two vectors. So, this is a three-dimensional method, okay, so, and, and this is really, you can just take your, your vectors, which are not in three dimensions, and just move your head until you have it in a plane, and you've got that. Okay, so vector A is uh, represented, uh, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit and say that the, what I call the matrix method, is where you take your unit vectors i, j, and k, and then under that you put in the coordinates of a, and then the coordinates of b. Okay, and then you just take and you write the equation a2 times b3 minus A3 times B2, and the next coordinate is A3, B1 minus A1, B3, and the next coordinate is A1, B2 minus A2, B1. So it was driving me nuts that, well, how, how do they go from this thing to that thing. They're so drastically different. Okay, so I, I doped it out. It's really cool. Here's what you do. Just make yourself this this um, array right here, or matrix. We call it arrays in, in computer world where, where I have spent 50 years. But at any rate, um, in the coordinate system, then vector A, we take vector A, that's got length A in the X axis. There's the x and the y axis. Okay, so I take vector a in in the um, in the uh, x axis, and that's just length a. In the b axis or y axis, that's zero. And in the z axis, it's zero. See, I'm just filling in these things. Now, in the uh, for vector b, then the x-axis is going to be this right here. 
which would be B cos theta. So I write B cos theta. And then for the B2, that's in the Y direction. So that is right here, which would be B sine theta. So I'm going to write B sine theta for that section. And then for the z-axis, that's zero. So it's going to put zero. So now we have our A1, A2, A3, and B1, B2, and B3. Uh, at this point, you can, you're probably way ahead of me. <laughs> but at any rate, let me just do it the teachable way. And we've got A2, A2, which is zero, times B3, B1, 2, 3, which is zero, uh, minus A3, A1, 2, 3, which is zero, times B2, 1, 2, which is B sine theta. That is the the first coordinate, and the second one is A3, A1, 2, 3, 0, times B1, B1, which is B cos theta minus a1, which is A, times B3, which is B1, 2, 3, which is 0, comma, um, A1, which is A, uh, B2, B1, 2, which is times B sine theta, minus A2, A1, 2, which is 0, times B1, A, or B1, which is B cos theta. Okay, so now multiplying these out, well, zero, comma, zero, comma, well, that part's zero, but that part remains A, B, sine, theta. Voila! And in fact, now you can see that this is the x-axis, the y-axis, and the b-axis, I mean the z-axis, so the z-axis coming either straight out or straight down is, in fact, orthogonal because the other two are zero. So, let me say it again. Voila! I was so happy I figured that out. <laughs>